Well, hello there, Madison Avenue. It is so good to see each and every one of you here at Sun for our Sunday afternoon uh, message series, and I'm excited to uh, bring you lesson number two in this series today, uh, and uh, coming to you with a little bit of a different format. I uh, hope that you don't mind that today, but uh, I'm wanting to share this message with you this afternoon. We're going to be looking at uh, the second lesson in our series about uh, the gospel of uh, being in the beginning. The beginning Beginning in the gospel lessons that we can find in Genesis and in Job. And uh, we're going to be looking at a few of these things today. So I'm excited to share this with you this afternoon and uh, to give you lesson number two. Lesson number two is entitled God's Good people. If you remember last week, we talked about how every good story has a beginning and how in the beginning God created all things. And we talked about those first five or six days of creation. We talked about how all of God's creation was a good creation. It was a creation that was made by Jesus. It was made for Jesus and to bring Jesus honor and glory. Today, we're going to be looking at how God's prized creation is you and me, how as humanity, as mankind, we are God's prized creation. So let's look at a couple of these things together. Uh, we'll have a handout uh, prepared for you. If you were at Sunday morning worship service in person, you would have been able to pick up that handout on the back table. If you were not in our morning service in person, uh, you should be able to download this handout uh, on your tablet, smartphone, or computer. Uh, if you have your computer hooked up to your printer, you could even print it out from home there. It'll be available in PDF form. Look in the uh, comment section on the post, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, and you'll be able to find the um, direct link to download this handout today. Uh, but um, uh, if you have your handout with you, go ahead and pull that out. We're going to be getting into that here in just a few moments. Let me give you the example of a summary, though. Let me give you some summary and summarize uh, this lesson for you today. Number one, in the previous lesson, we traced the first five and a half days of creation, seeing that God created everything uh, for the good of his son, Jesus Christ. But in this lesson, uh, we'll be examining the rest of the creation account, and we'll be focusing on the pinnacle of God's creation, and that is us, humanity. In doing so, we will see that God created people uh, to be... Um, uh, unique from the rest of his creation, uh, that we are to bear the very image of God himself. And in this bearing of God's image, we will find uh, our dignity and our purpose and the foundation of our relationship with God and our relationship with other people. And how not only are we God's prized creation, but as his creation, we are to have a relationship with him and a relationship with other people. We'll be looking at three points in our outline this afternoon. Uh, we'll be looking at how we bear God's image and how we are to rule over God's world, how we bear God's image and how we are to work and rest, and how when we bear God's image, uh, we are to relate to him and to others. So those are the three things we're going to be looking at today. Uh, if we were to put this lesson today in a sentence, in one single sentence, oh, I'm behind on this. I apologize. Let me catch up here. I've got a, uh, a catch up on our outline. All right. Our summary was this, two points. Number one, God's pinnacle of creation is humanity. All right. So that is the first thing that we are going to be looking at today. And then the second point in summary of our lesson is that God God created humanity to bear his image in every facet of life. And so uh, this is the summary that we are looking at today. Now let's look at our lesson in a sentence, all right? The lesson in a sentence today is this. People were created by God to bear his image in every facet of our life. So in everything that we do, uh, we are created for that purpose, to bear the image of God. Now let's look at our introduction. Our introduction has three points. Number one today, our first point in introduction is this. Our experience of, uh, uh, our experiences of under, uh, of uh, undervaluing an object can be very painful. I've got a story to share with you about that and about this, this topic today, okay? I wanna share this story with you here. It says this. A few years ago, there was a news story 
This news story was about a man who probably had the worst day ever. Uh, one day after his wife uh, had uh, delivered their, their child, uh, he decided he needed to raise a little bit of money and decided to have a garage sale. And in this garage sale, he placed a jewelry box that he thought his wife did not use anymore. The problem was that the day before uh, going into labor, his wife had placed inside the jewelry box her wedding ring, which was worth a lot of money. Uh, and inside this, she put it for safekeeping. But without him knowing it, without her knowing it, he did not realize that she had placed the ring in the box. She did not realize he was going to sell the box in a garage sale. And so because of the lack of communication, this ring that was valued at several thousands of dollars was tucked away inside. And this man sold it in the garage sale for a mere 10 dollars. Well, not many of us have given away rings that are worth thousands of dollars for only 10 bucks. At one point in time, uh, we've made the mistake at uh, uh, allowing us to undervalue something, where maybe we've sold something and we've undervalued what it's actually worth. You see, that jewelry box was worth thousands and thousands of dollars, but the man had no idea. He sold it. He gave it away for a mere 10 bucks. And so we see here that there's an idea that this man had undervalued what was really there. Our experiences of undervaluing an object can be very painful. This man found this out the hard way. It was very painful for him to see this object and to know that he had sold this object for something that it was not worth. It was very much undervalued. And so our experiences of undervaluing an object can be very painful. Uh, but we have all made uh, the greater mistake of failing uh, to value humanity as we should. We all undervalue humanity. We undervalue one another. We undervalue God's creation. God's creation of humanity is the most important thing that we should be grasping. And then uh, number two, uh, we fail to value humanity both in ourselves as well as in others. We fail to do this as we should. God's creation is a prized creation and uh, we undervalue it time and time and time again. And at number three, the third point of introduction uh, this afternoon is that in previous lessons, we've looked at the beginning. We've seen that God created everything and that it was for the good of his son. But in this lesson, we're gonna be examining Examining the rest of his creation. We're going to be examining that humanity. We're going to be examining uh, uh, how we should uh, uh, take that humanity. We should take other people and we should hold it in a very high, high uh, standard with God. So let's get into our outline this afternoon. Let's see if I can keep all of this straight today so that we can read it together and look at all of this uh, as uh, we're putting all of this together in our outline today. So so in the form of outline point number one, let's get right to it. Number one, we bear God's image. We bear God's image in how we rule over the world and how we rule over creation. Look with me in Genesis chapter number one. We're going to be reading verses 26 through 31, and they should be there at the bottom of your screen today. So let's read this together. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, uh, which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat 
And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw that everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we bear God's image in how we rule over the world and how we rule over the things that he has given to us. You know, the reality is we have a very skewed uh, definition of humanity. Our definition of humanity has become very, very skewed. And there's two points that we can look at this. Number one, let's look at the first point in how we skew this. Number one, we skew it uh, ourselves. Our quest for perfection, our worth drives us to focus on our deficiencies. What we perceive to be wrong with ourselves, where we fall short of our idealization and, and uh, our idealization standards of beauty and value. You see, we, we put our own standards upon our own selves. We look at what uh, the world has set before us, and we don't realize that the humanity that God has given to us is, is something that he has shared with us in a great and mighty way. Point number two, not only uh, do we lose that humanity within ourselves, but we lose that humanity within our culture. We see that here within our culture that we live in a world that is seeking to define and redefine humanity where human rights are based upon the def uh, uh, based on the definition of the day that is paramount. We we uh, we look at the different things that are coming up each and every day. And instead of looking at the image that God has given to us here in the scripture, looking at the image that God has given to us uh, uh, um, that the Bible has given given to us. We allow ourselves to define our humanity and we allow our culture to define our humanity. And the reality is the the, the um uh, the reality is this, letter B, uh, that while the world's definitions plague us, God's definition is what stands. It is God's definition of our humanity that we need to see, that we need to learn, that we need to put forth. See, the reality is our humanity is defined in this. It is in Jesus that we see the true image of God. It is not anything else that this world has to offer. This world has been put here for us to, to uh, rule over. This world has been put here for us to... Um, uh, uh, for us to have. And it, it is not the world that defines our humanity. It is Jesus that defines our humanity. The greatest way that we bear the image of God, listen to this, here's the next point that is so important. The greatest way we bear the image of God is by valo valuing the pinnacle of his creation, and that is humanity. Back in our scripture, the first few verses that we read, we can see that God has told us that we uh, uh, have dominion over the herb. We have dominion over the trees. We have dominion over the fowls of the air, over everything that creepeth upon, upon the earth. You see, it's not the world that gives us uh, uh, that dominion. It's not the world that gives us our humanity. It's not the world that gives us our value, but it is that we have dominion over that world that we have value. You see, it is in Jesus that we see the true image of God. God. And the greatest way that we bear image, uh, uh, the greatest way that we bear this, uh, let's look at this next point, is that we should treat all people with respect. The greatest way that we bear the image of God is by valuing his humanity. Not the herbs and not the trees that are around us, but by the humanity that God has given us. We should treat all people with respect. Letter F. Letter F. We should care for and provide for those that are in need. And then letter G, we should use these resources of the world to honor God and God's image bears. And so uh, we see here that we bear God's image in how we rule over the world. How are we ruling the world? Are we ruling uh, in and of ourselves? Are we ruling in our culture? Or are we ruling in the true image of God, which is Jesus Christ? 
Christ. And that is the things that we really should be looking at. We should use the resources of this world to honor God and the things that God has given us. Number two, let's look at the second point uh, this afternoon. Number two, we bear God's image in how we work and how we rest. Uh, as we rest, uh, we bear the image of the one who's brought all things into existence by his work. Uh, let's go back and let's read those verses together now, okay? Let's read in chapter number 2, verses 1 through 3, and then let's read in chapter number 2, verse number 15. So we're going to read verses 1, 2, and 3, and then we're going to skip down to verse number 15. Starting in verse number 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all the work which God had created and made. Now skip down to verse number 15 with me. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it, and to keep it. You see, as we work, we bear the image of the one who brought all things into existence by his work. It is the work of God that brings all of these things into existence. And it is, uh, we've got to realize that work is part of God's plan. Work is part of the plan that God has given to us. Work uh, not done, and here's an awesome phrase that I want to share with you today. This is not mine, but it's something that I read and that I want to make sure and share with you. Work not done in the image of God and or for the glory of God is a work done in defiance of God. Everything that we do should be done to glorify God and to bring God the power and to bring God the praise, excuse me, not the power, but the praise that he deserves. God already has all the power. God has everything that he needs, but we should praise him as such. And so we bear God's image in how we work. We bear God's image in how we praise. Well, on the seventh uh, uh, on this seventh day, after God completed his work of creating the heavens, of creating the earth, we see that God finished his work and he rested. Now, here's what we need to understand today. He did not rest because he needed to. God was not weary from his labor. He is all-powerful. He is infinite in all that he does. Uh, he does not grow tired. Instead, God rested, signaling that his creative work was complete. It is in his rest from work that we find a pattern of our work and, and how we need to rest. All rest and no work does not reflect the image of God. All work and no rest does not reflect the image of God. You see, the image of God is to find a balance between the two. We're to find balance between working and we're to find balance between resting. You see, when we rest, we reflect the image of the one who created and rested and the one who will provide our final rest one day. We bear God's image in how we work and how we rest in everything that we do. And then point number three, last but certainly not least this afternoon, we bear God's image in how we relate to him and how we relate to others. Humanity alone has the capacity to be in a personal relationship with God. Nothing else has the ability to be in that relationship but you and I, we do. We bear God's image and we honor our relationship with him in our loving obedience to his commands. But you see, there's something that has broken that relationship with God. And the thing that has broken that relationship with God is our sin. That sin has broken our relationship with God. And we need something that can mend that sin. Something that can bring us back into relationship with him. And that person, the only thing that can bring that back is that God sent Jesus, who was the perfect image of God. When we trust in Christ, when we trust in Jesus for all that we do, uh, he uh, uh, we restore that relationship with God. That relationship is restored only in Jesus 
Christ. While our primary relationship is with God, he designs us to enjoy meaningful relationships with other people as well. I want us to look now in Genesis chapter number 2. I want us to look at the next couple of verses here. We're going to look at verses 16, 17, and 18, and then we're going to skip down to verse number 21. Read these verses with me in verse number 16 through 18. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest of it thou shalt surely die and the Lord said it is not good that man should be alone I will make him and help meet for him now skip down to verse number 21 21 through verse number 25 and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh, and stood thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. You see, while God has created us to have a relationship with him, God has also created us to have a relationship with mankind. God's primary, uh, our primary relationship should be with God, but our secondary relationship should be with one another. Letter E. The first time God said something was not good was when he saw that man was isolated. And so God's plan is for people to give him the glory, but also to relate with one another. Today I pray that you are relating not only with God, but that you are relating with one another. God is glorified. When God is glorified, when he, he excuse me, he is glorified when those who he created learn to dwell together in a loving and in a faithful community. You see, this is God's good people. This is the reality that we are created for a specific reason. We are created for a specific purpose. We are created for the purpose to not only have a relationship with him, but we are created to have a purpose with one another. I pray today that you have that relationship with God. I pray today that you have a relationship with one another. I pray that you realize God has created us for a very specific good purpose, a very specific good reason, and that specific purpose and that specific reason is to give him glory and to have a relationship with one another. Build, number one, your relationship with God. Number two, build it with one another. I pray today that you would learn to do that, that you would learn to uh, have that relationship with God. I pray that your humanity would kick in, that you would have relationship with one another, that you'd have relationship with people that are in your church, the relationship with people that are within your family, people that are uh, your neighbors, your co-workers, all those that are around you. Build those relationships with God today. Build those relationships with one another today. Build those up. We are God's good people. We are his prized creation. Live as such. Would you do that today? I pray that you would. I hope that you enjoy the lesson today. We look forward to getting into the third lesson next week. God bless you and have a wonderful day.